On January 5th, 2024, a brand new Boeing 737 MAX 9 made headlines after a door blew out in mid-flight over Portland, Oregon. This is only the most recent in a slew of bad publicity for the 737 MAX. Boeing's decision to push forward with a 55-year-old airframe combined with production shortcuts and questionable management may have put millions of passengers worldwide in danger. But things aren't as simple as they seem. This is the story of how corporate greed and a chain of bad decisions, engineering, and regulatory decisions put Boeing in the public eye. We'll find out why Boeing made the 737 MAX in the first place and designed it the way they did, how critical design mistakes led to two fatal crashes killing almost 400 people, and how a couple of loose bolts almost raised that number to over 500. Alaska Flight 1282. This video is brought to you by Delete Me. It's 5.07 p.m. as Alaska Airlines Flight 1282 takes off from Portland International Airport. Susanna Anderson, a healthcare worker, has just overcome that tingling sensation of fear you always have when the plane first takes off the ground. But she continues reading her book as she sits in the first row in aisle seat 1C. 27 rows behind her, Garrett Cunningham was dozing off lightly next to his girlfriend in preparation for what should have been a quick return trip to Southern California. At 5.13, a loud explosion as the airplane climbed to 16,000 feet toward cruising altitude jolts Garrett out of his slumber. At that exact moment, Susanna feels her clothes being sucked back as the pages of her book flip like crazy in a sudden gust of wind amidst screams of utter terror and panic. When she looks back, she sees some people screaming and notices the dumbfounded look on Garrett's face as he hugs his girlfriend and stares frozen in his seat at the night sky through a hole the size of a refrigerator on the Boeing 737's fuselage. She looks to the front and notices the expression of fear on the flight attendant's faces as they desperately try to reclose the cockpit door, which had slammed open due to the explosive depressurization. She fears this is the end and starts calling her loved ones to say goodbye. In his seat, Garrett hugs his girlfriend even harder, his brain not able to process what had just happened and what will in all likelihood happen next. We're in Alaska, or Seattle, Alaska. He stares at the empty seats next to the hole. Were there passengers in those seats? He can't even recall. The mere thought made him feel sick and momentarily forget the imminent danger ahead. He wasn't ready to die, but neither he nor any of the other passengers could foresee what would happen next. The pilots were able to land the plane safely a couple of minutes later. Besides ringing ears, a couple of lost cell phones, and very probably a bit of post-traumatic stress, no one was seriously hurt. Miraculously, and to Garrett's relief, no one was sitting in the two seats next to a faulty door plug that blew out. What were the odds of that? The first question that crossed my mind was how many passengers were on board and how many of the seats were empty. It turns out that Flight 1282 had been booked almost full. The plane, which can seat 178 passengers, was flying with 171 passengers on board. So there were only seven empty seats on the entire flight, and coincidentally, two of them, seats 26A and 26B, were side by side next to the torn door plug. Alaska later stated that miraculously, no one was assigned to those two particular seats, and it was just pure luck. Or was it? Is it possible that the airline knew something was wrong with the door plug and purposely avoided assigning passengers to those seats? I'll get back to that in a minute because you're gonna to wanna to hear what I found out. In the meantime, here's what happened after the incident. On January 7th, the FAA issued an emergency airworthiness directive requiring all operators to check the rear mid-cabin exit door plugs. The FAA also grounded all 737 MAX 9 aircraft until further notice, a second grounding of the 737 MAX family. This directive impacted 171 of the 200 737 MAX 9s Boeing has delivered to date, most of them operated by Alaska and United Airlines. Security and safety have to matter. Have you ever tried Googling yourself? I have, and it's seriously shocking and why I signed up for our sponsor this week, Delete Me. It's crazy to me that collecting people's personal information and selling it online is a legit business, but here we are. Delete Me is a hands-free subscription service that'll remove your personal information that's being sold online. Just look at this, 53 data brokers had my data 
and my info was reviewed over 7,000 listings. And it's not just a one-time thing. They stay vigilant and keep an eye on your data and remove it quarter after quarter as needed. You can even make custom removal requests. I've been a member now for about a year and I just got my fourth quarterly report. And it's not just about you, how about family members? For me, I worry about my mom and dad and delete me makes it easy to protect your entire family. You know, hackers are using AI to imitate people's likeness and copy their voice to trick loved ones into sending them money or private info. And guess where they get all those relationships and info from? It's why it's so important. Have you ever heard the expression, if something is free, you're the product being sold. Well, take back your privacy online. Get that extra peace of mind of having experts on your side and save 20% on all plans with Delete Me and discount code Ricky. Huge thanks to Delete Me and you for supporting the show. But even the other carriers flying 737 MAX 9s without door plugs grounded their planes for an emergency safety inspection. This included the three MAX 9s the Indonesian budget airline Lion Air purchased in 2017 and 2018. It'll become very clear why they did that, even though they didn't have to in a few minutes. But before we get there, this is a good moment to clarify what a door plug actually is. A door plug is basically a dummy door or panel used to seal off an emergency exit door frame on an airplane's fuselage. I know that sounds like a strange thing at first. Why would you put a frame for an emergency exit door only to seal it off with a dummy panel? I looked through some of the laws and regulations in aviation around emergency exit doors. It turns out the number of emergency exit doors a plane need depend on the number of passengers. A 737 MAX 9 can hold up to 220 seats in a compact all economy class configuration. This number of passengers requires a total of 10 exit doors to ensure the golden standard of a minimum evacuation time of 90 seconds mandated by the American aviation law. So when a budget airline like Ryanair or Lion Air buys a 220 seat 737 MAX 9, Boeing has to install all 10 exit doors. But Alaska only outfitted 178 seats, including premium and first class seats with more legroom and comfort for its passengers. With these fewer seats, American aviation law allows eliminating the two mid rear cabin emergency exit doors, saving weight and maintenance costs and replacing them with a bolted panel or plug. And that is a door plug. This door plug is held in place with four bolts, yet it somehow blew off cleanly without leaving significant damage on the fuselage of Flight 1282. How is that possible? The answer came from inspecting other 737 MAX 9s. When I looked at the report from the FAA's Emergency Airworthiness Directive, some carriers reported loose bolts on the door plugs and other hardware. This would explain why the doors came out so cleanly, but investigators haven't found the four bolts that fastened the door plug to the fuselage in Flight 1282. If they find them, we may have a better view of what really happened. But Regardless, this raises a serious red flag on Boeing's manufacturing, quality control, and oversight, putting the company in the public eye for the third time in less than 10 years. Before I go on, I want to put things into context and explain again just how massive and complex the aviation industry is. Because we often take for granted the million things that have to go on behind the scenes each and every time we board a flight. And it starts with design and manufacturing. Unlike the automotive industry, where almost everything is completely automated, Boeing's planes are mostly assembled by hand. These are workers, real people, who are doing the work, not robots. So if the management pushes them or overworks them too much, they're bound to make mistakes. Good quality inspections will catch most of all those mistakes, but what happens if you don't have enough inspectors? Or if the inspectors aren't doing their job properly, trying to rush through the inspections? According to Whistle blower Ed Pearson, that's exactly what's going on at Boeing's assembly plants. We'll go deeper into this because there's a lot to unpack. But first, it's also fair to say that at least part of the fault lies with Alaska Airlines themselves. Remember how I hinted that I found something revealing about Alaska Airlines and those empty seats? According to a report, that particular MAX 9 had not one, but three recent depressurization incidents before this flight. And we're talking about an airliner that rolled out of assembly just two months prior. Apparently, the pilot simply turned off the warning alarms and didn't check the fuselage for leaks. The only safety measure the airline took was to avoid flying the airplane long hauls over open waters in case something happened. So they knew something was wrong with the plane. They even knew that it was losing pressure. Why on earth didn't they complain to Boeing? It was a brand new plane after all. And this makes me 
so angry. If you buy a brand new car and two months later the brakes start malfunctioning and the dashboard is giving you all kinds of warning lights like a Christmas tree, you don't disconnect the lights and decide to just drive your car anyway and roll the dice. The worst part is that a leak in cabin pressure isn't even that hard to find. Something as simple as using ultrasonic acoustic detectors to catch the high frequency hissing sound of escaping air and using soap and water to visually inspect the leak would have been enough. This is either simple and brutal negligence, as in the plane is new and must be fine, so let's just switch off the warning light, or something is coaxing Alaska Airlines behind closed doors to hide the truth. To be honest, after that revelation, I find it likely that Alaska knew that it had a problem with that plug door specifically and decided not to assign seats 26A or B just in case something went wrong. But that's just a theory, and we'll have to wait for the investigation to conclude. Also, it doesn't justify that multiple planes have loose door plug bolts. That's all on Boeing. It's why most of the public attention has been on Boeing and the 737 MAX, but faulty plugs are only the start. This plane also has the dubious honor of holding the world's record for the longest grounding in aviation history. The 737 MAX is infamous for two earlier fatal crashes that resulted in the death of almost 400 people. Lion Air Flight 610 crashed on October 29th, 2018 with 189 passengers and crew. Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 crashed less than five months later on March 10th, 2019 with 157 souls on board. There were no survivors in either crash. Both crashes had something in common. A faulty angle of attack sensor provided erroneous data to a new computer flight control system in the 737 MAX called the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS for short. Because of the wrong data, the MCAS thought the plane was about to stall and self-corrected by pitching the nose down, eventually driving the airplane nose first into the ground. That's the short version of it. I found that the long version has as much to do with Boeing and economics as it does with the regulations and oversight of the aviation industry as a whole. The 737 is the best-selling jetliner of all time. As of December 2023, 16,459 Boeing 737s have been ordered and 11,660 have been delivered. The first 737, the 737-100, entered service in 1968, making this the oldest major commercial plane type still made today. But that's not necessarily a good thing. Compared to the most modern competitors, even the latest 737 MAX is, by any measure, an old airplane with an outdated airframe. But why does Boeing keep making the 737? Why doesn't it just retire it like it did the 747 jumbo jet and design a completely new, more modern aircraft from the ground up? In a way, Boeing was strong-armed by the market and its biggest rival, Airbus. This is how things happened based on what I found. The 737 was a wildly popular plane because it had a cheap and reliable reputation. It wasn't as efficient as more modern airplanes with newer engines, but that didn't matter to airlines because they were using them for short haul flights only. This meant that planes spent most of their time parked in airports rather than flying. But in the early 2010s, the market began to change. Companies like Airbus created newer single aisle planes that could cover longer routes. I also looked at the historical data and found that between 2008 and 2013, prices for jet fuel had reached an all time high. Both things made fuel efficiency much more important. Airlines wanted smaller, more efficient planes fast, and Boeing knew this. But the turning point in the story came when Boeing's biggest customer, American Airlines, which flew almost exclusively Boeing airplanes, announced on July 20th, 2011, the largest aircraft order in aviation history. An order of 460 narrow-body jetliners of the Airbus A320 and Boeing 737 families. American Airlines announced its intentions to order 100 of Boeing's expected new evolution of the 737NG, with a new engine that would offer even more significant fuel efficiency gains over today's models. The planes hadn't even been announced by Boeing at the time. So American Airlines literally forced Boeing to build a new plane with the oldest airframe in its current production. This would be the fourth generation of the Boeing's popular 737. I asked myself, why would American Airlines prefer a newer version of an old plane instead of a newer plane? The answer to me was obvious. It had to be money. The question was, how does a new Boeing 737 help American Airlines make more money than a new version of a new plane? The answer took me deep in the weeds of airplane certifications in the aviation industry. So, 
Suppose you're Boeing and you want to design a new production jetliner. You need to get the design certified as airworthy by the relevant authorities, mainly the FAA in the US and the EASA in Europe. The first step is to get a type certificate, proving that the aircraft design meets the airworthiness standards. If you design an entirely new plane from the ground up, you'll need a new type certificate, which means that the entire design and performance of the aircraft must be tested and approved. This can take five to nine years and cost hundreds of millions of dollars. But if you make a new model airplane based on an old, previously certified plane, like the 737NG, you don't need a new type certificate. You just need to get the type certificate amended. In this case, you only need to certify the things that changed. This certification is much easier to complete. For example, the type certificate for the Airbus A350-900 only took 14 months to complete. The 737 is an aircraft type. That means that all 737 families up to 2011, the 737, the 737 Classic, and the NG all had the same type certificate. A new 737 model would benefit from the same certificate. With the rush to meet demand and avoid losing money and market share to Airbus, it's easy to see why Boeing would benefit from developing the 737 MAX instead of a brand new airplane. But besides getting their planes faster, how do American Airlines and other carriers benefit? That's where pilot certifications come in. Having the same type certification means that the same types of airplanes fly and handle similarly. And that means that a pilot trained to fly a particular 737 should be able to fly all models of that family. Critically, this means that pilots don't require a separate certification or training for every 737 model. And that's where American Airlines comes into play. If Boeing made an entirely new aircraft, American Airlines would have to be forced to train new pilots for their new aircraft. But they already had thousands of certified 737 pilots, so they obviously preferred not having to train them on a new airplane model and spend millions in the process. Also beyond fuel costs and pilot training, it's cheaper to have fewer aircraft types since each type requires a separate maintenance and operational crew. If Boeing hadn't complied and decided to go in a different direction, they would have lost one of the most important clients and lost significant market share to their biggest competitor. Neither outcome sat well with Boeing shareholders. On August 30th, a little over a month after American Airlines announcement, Boeing announced the 737 MAX as the new variant of the old 737 with a 15% increased fuel efficiency that would make it feasible as a transatlantic narrow body aircraft. It was a business decision and not a bad one, I believe. Put yourself in Boeing's shoes for a moment. Would you have done something different? Sound off in the comments below. The decision to make the 737 MAX isn't where Boeing messed up. It's how they designed and built it, which created a challenge for Boeing's designers and engineers. The increase in efficiency requires swapping the old engines with newer, bigger CFM Leap 1B engines. This was a problem because the 737 is quite low to the ground. So they had to move the engine mount forward and up to make it fit without making the landing gear any bigger. But this changed the aerodynamics and overall flight characteristics significantly. So now the plane wasn't maneuvering like an old 737. When the pilot increased his thrust on engines, the plane would naturally pitch up, putting the aircraft in danger of stalling. So Boeing added the MCAS system to counter the differences and force the 737 MAX to fly more like the 737NG. The MCAS would engage, override the pilot's commands and correct by pitching the nose down. Their biggest mistake was to present such a critical element of the avionics as a simple upgrade to the flight control system. In doing so, they purposely avoided mentioning it to the plane's manuals and avoid the FAA forcing pilots to train on the new system. The pilots of Lion Air Flight 610 and Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 didn't know about the MCAS and didn't know what they had to do to disengage it if it behaved in a way that it shouldn't. So they couldn't pull up from the deadly nosedive the MCAS sent the plane into, killing everyone on board. Those were two completely avoidable tragedies, but corporate greed got the best of both Boeing and American Airlines. They put safety second and the cost reduction first to force a new plane into an old type certificate, killing almost 400 people in the process. The worst part is that the recent events of the Alaskan Airlines Flight 1282 prove that Boeing didn't learn its lessons. It's high time that we review the conditions for aircraft type certifications and have more oversight on what manufacturers like Boeing are doing, especially considering that today it's almost impossible to travel in the US without boarding a 737 MAX. In fact, 
I have a flight coming up with one. And I had just gotten over this until the Alaskan Airlines thing. And now here we are again. This is heartbreaking stuff because this is literally gambling with our lives. I want to know what all of you guys think about this. Sound off in the comments below. Until next week, I'm Ricky with Da Vinci and check out this video next.